There are some OG reefers watching this right now, potentially a marine biologist or a scientist or two that are saying, Remy, you're dumb. We've been doing this for centuries. What's up, coral people? My name is Remy, and welcome back to the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, he's got another video. It's like three this whole year. As promised, I am not doing videos that often. The last one was on June 22nd. Failing. Hard. And even though I'm not uploading as often, I still would love for you to subscribe here on this channel uh, because I've got something really cool coming up at the end of the year and I think you guys are gonna like it a lot. Truly, I can't believe it's actually happening. And also, I hate when people on YouTube do this, where they announce an announcement but I just wanna tell you the right way. Okay, so the Weeping Willow Toadstool. I have many videos on this particular coral, so I'm not gonna to dive too hard into what it actually is. There's plenty, just search Toadstool on my channel and you can find a bunch of stuff there. So a couple months ago, I was doing some work on the 25 gallon Lagoon, which is my oldest tank now, uh, over six years old, it might even be close to seven at this point. And I was doing some cutting of one of the toadstools in there and I cut around the crown as I would typically do. But something weird was that I noticed that one of the trunks to a toadstool in there had orphaned itself and it was just hanging out on a rock. But super interesting as it was growing a new crown out both ends of the trunk. So I said, what if I cut the trunk into like slices like pepperoni slice maybe not that thin but you know you kind of like a sausage like i wonder if it would grow so typically like i said before and i've got a couple of videos on this when you cut a toadstool and you want to make frags of it you would cut like kind of a donut shape around the crown or honestly you could cut any little bit of the crown and cut it up into slices and it will grow back the way this trunk was growing just had me thinking so I asked a bunch of friends in the hobby, uh, Chris from ACI Aquaculture, Than from Tidal Gardens, I uh, asked Rich Ross, I got a question in Julian Sprung, Salem, and I, I said, if I cut this trunk, will this thing grow? And none of them had actually done it themselves, maybe Julian has, but they didn't see why it wouldn't work so i cut it and for this first time around i made them pretty chunky so for those of you that have kids and you know chop up hot dogs kind of that that chunkiness that that thickness if you will what i thought was super fascinating is that if you look down into the stalk you can see all of those polyp stalks just hanging out ready to go I looked for some anatomical like diagrams, uh, maybe some soft coral marine biologists would have access to or have posted online. And I couldn't really find anything that was uh, illustrated what I was seeing. But from an amateur's eye, I would guess that these stalks go all the way through the trunk. So for those of you that have toadstools with long trunks on them, Think of the polyp stalks going all the way down through the middle of that thing. Uh, mounted these in several different ways, uh, a couple sideways, one with tie, one without tie. Um, this had some, some sand, some rock embedded in its tissue, so I'm hoping that that's what grabs onto that glue and it won't let go, but I could be wrong, just experimenting. What's interesting is the, and I'm sure that this is well documented somewhere, but the you can see the little dots on the inside of the trunk, which I'm assuming will form into polyps at some point, but it's repeated throughout the entire trunk, so it's uniform. So, I don't know. Is it that easy? We'll see. Now, I've also noticed in my tanks that even the tiniest amount of tissue that's left on a rock could develop into a full-grown toadstool. And I think that's characteristic of most soft corals. So I mounted these up in a couple different ways. First, vertical, assuming that only one crown would form. Second, horizontal, assuming that two crowns would form. And it took about a month, guys, but look at this. Viable specimens from a trunk cut. So both of my hypotheses were true. Now you're probably asking yourself, Remy, why does this even matter? Well, A, it's, it's freaking cool. And B, this was a small trunk, so the diameter was probably about an inch. Now, if you get some of those girthier trunks, 
think about how you already have a crown in place, ready to go very early on. Hang with me. Theoretically, you would have a medium to large size toadstool based on the size of the trunk that you cut right off the bat. There are some OG reefers watching this right now, potentially a marine biologist or a scientist or two that are saying, Remy, you're dumb. We've been doing this for centuries. We were doing this 4,000 years ago, okay? I don't know where you've been, but uh, welcome to the party. Who knows? I asked a bunch of people in the hobby, uh, some pretty prominent farmers, and they didn't utilize this technique. So uh, I don't know. I wanted to make a video about it. Another piece of this puzzle is accessibility. So obviously, you're not going to have just a random trunk hanging out in your tank if you've got a healthy toadstool, so the crown is easier to access that's still gonna be the best way to frag it if you just wanna give to uh, another hobbyist, another friend, or you wanna sell pieces of that. Just know that if you ever have a rogue piece of trunk hanging out on some rocks, you can cut that and you can make some viable frags with it. This is always what I wanted this channel to be, just a, a kind of a place where I could share with you my journey in the reefing hobby. And that has changed a lot over the years as I've now uh, gotten into the industry side of things, but I uh, still have that hobbyist within. So still experimenting, still playing with all the coral and the fish and loving every minute of this. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing. And if you have any anecdotes about how maybe you've discovered a new way of cutting coral, uh, could be a toadstool, could be leathers, could be zoas, whatever. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for hanging. And also shout out to Steve Nair of Reef Chasers who sent me coral like three months ago and I still have not provided a video on that. But uh, just know that with the Red Sea update, that is going to come. In the meantime, go to reefchasers.com and buy coral. I'm sure Steve would appreciate that. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.